Welcome to the session of What's New in the Identity Manager 8.2. In this specific part of the series, we want to talk about the operations portal and the improvements. And we want to talk about the configuration portal. Remember, the configuration portal is the portal to configure the API server and the API based front ends. And so we should discuss it. With that, we will as well close the series about what's new in the web of the A.2 Identity Manager. And we will then continue with talking about features of the base engine and all the other features. But now have fun, especially with the last web fronts. As you can see in the operations web portal, one of our updated features is the handling of frozen jobs. Remember, frozen jobs are these jobs who was not able to be executed from the process perspective, and they typically can be handled. People know the technical details, for example, handling them in job queue info, know that frozen jobs can just be restored it or reset it depending on needs. And as you can see, this behavior is now as well implemented in our standard web portal, which means you can now just click on such frozen jobs and select the way of handling them you like. Additionally to that, completely new in the operations portal is now management of outstanding objects. As you know, outstanding objects are missing objects identified during synchronization. And typically it was possible to handle these outstanding objects in the manager. That means it was possible just to step into the manager and recreate them or delete them or such from the identity manager world. However, this is now possible in the operations portal as well, which is a big step forward because operations don't need the manager for such anymore. Additionally to that exists a new application role that is base role operation support synchronization post processing, which allows at the end to do exactly this. And of course, uh, in connection with that specific role exists a new dialog group QER for manage outstanding, which holds the particular permissions necessary to do so. And to support the complete processing and process execution as well. Uh, a little bit of better representation of object was implemented so that it is now possible to see more properties in the list. And you can as well sort and group these things a little bit better so that you get a better overview. As you remember, operations was always able to start and stop uh, the process engine and the calculation engine of the identity manager. Now with H.2, the permissions to stop one of these queues is just assigned to a separate and specific permission so that at the end, not everybody who is working with the operations portal can do so. Only a very specific role is now allowed. Therefore, a new feature was created and assigned to a specific application role called base roles operation support system administrators with the according permission group called QER for system administrators. Last but not least, on the operations portal side, it is now possible to reset passwords directly if this is requested from a user perspective. And a little bit demo as well. As you can see, we are in the manager. There is base roles. Underneath of base roles, you'll find the new option operation support that was necessary to be able to use the operations uh, support portal, of course. And uh, there are new entries underneath. There is a password help desk uh, that is just to send passcodes to people. There is synchronization post processing that is the yes, permission that allows to post process or to handle all of these outdated objects. And there is as well system administrators, which allows to start and to stop at the end the identity manager. And if we look into that specific portal, you see the operations support web portal. It's uh, quite clean. There's a dashboard that is our first site. You can search for things currently not really something to search, so I will not try it. But as you can see, there's the database log. You can look into the database log if you like to. This is sometimes helpful. 
There is unsolved references that are reference problems in the identity manager can be solved. There is as well a status report for our av available services. For example, you can see here all installed services and with hitting on a check button, you can see that they are responding. If we step then to the processes, uh, we will see processes not at all right now because there are no processes. You can see here the frozen job handling. I can just uh, click that specific predefined filter and get only the frozen jobs. And then I'm able to handle frozen jobs if I like to. No frozen jobs in my system, so I can't show you that. Database log was something we saw. Synchronization outstanding objects is something we talked about. For example, for my Active Directory, which is connected. You can see it here. You saw as well here in the drop down box, all other target systems are as well selectable object type, whatever. Here is one of these entries. As you easily can see, if I check them, then I can handle it with a delete, reset or add it to the target system and so on. That means this is as well implemented. So web applications, um, we saw a list of servers before. That is now the list of web applications. You know, all of these features are features as well implemented in job queue info, but for the operations team, job queue info is often more painful because it's a very technical tool. This tool here is nicer to use for operations of course, it is not an alternative for developers. Project developers will continue using the job queue info. Last but not least, there's the system status. You can see it there and you can stop the system here, DBQ and job queue. And if you hit both buttons, our system will not do anything longer. With that, this is the short demo and we can directly move to our next demo, which is the demo of our configuration portal. So this is now the chance to see our administration portal. As you can see, it is the last portal on the API server. The administration portal is uh, the replacement for the web configuration parameters. We had in web designer for the standard web portal. In difference to the web designer uh, and the portal there, this administration portal has two purposes. One of them is just to configure the API server itself. The second is to configure the installed web applications. To open it, I have to log in here with a specific user. This time I will use a system user to have all permissions which are necessary. And if I'm signed in, then I get an overview. As you can see, that is the API project, uh, product name, version number, all of that stuff. And then you see all the plugins running. That is what I installed together with the portal before. If I then step from the dashboard directly to the configuration, I see something that looks a little bit similar, not 100%, but a little bit similar to what we know from Chrome or from Firefox if we look into the about config page. And what we can do here is to configure things. Yeah, first of all, there's the API server configuration. For example, if I open that, there is something I can configure. I don't know exactly what that here is, but it is a configuration I can do for the API server. And then you can see API providers, API server configuration, uh, then composition of the API configuration, all very technical things. However, this is one space we can talk about, but if we just drop that down, then we see a lot of more spaces. For example, I can jump into the portal configuration and having the portal configuration, then I might see different things. Yeah, for example, here are different API calls and then I'm able just to open that and to activate or deactivate things. I can as well look a little bit down below where there are functions, request configuration, check the functional area or check organizational units, all stuff which could be activated or could not be activated or configured. And then I can enter there a lot of things. As you easily can see, the most, I like to say, senseful way is to read somewhere in the manual what you want to configure and then to use the search button just to configure the one or the other. For example, I want to configure something for attestation in the portal section. I just type attestation 
And if I do so, then you see I get all what is related to attestation, for example. And I think that is the most sensible way to get information. But what you should never forget is that if you are just selecting here another portal, you just as well clean the filter because what you can see now is right nothing. And that is because in the skim connector, there's of course no attestation. So if I just get rid of the filter, you see then here the configuration for the skim, skim connector and so on. At the end, I think the best guess is to read something in the manual to search for the right term. And for all the people who are not really happy uh, about that, uh, they can then just open one of these sections, starting maybe with the portal, which is the standard web portal, and going step by step through all of these different configurations. And uh, with a little bit configuration or at the end, uh, a link to the specific API component, then the one or other can turn on or turn off, or as you can see it here, configured. I count on the manual, but as you can see it here, sometimes smaller hints, that means help lines are as well added so that people know what that specific configuration is stands for.